What are Gog and Magog? We're going to answer that question. You can also discover more on gotquestions.org. Historically speaking, Magog was a grandson of Noah. His descendants settled to the far north of Israel, likely in Europe and northern Asia. Magog seems to be used to refer to northern barbarians in general, but likely also has a connection to Magog the person. The people of Magog are described as skilled warriors. Gog and Magog appear in Ezekiel 38 through 39 and in Revelation 20 verses 7 through 8. While these two passages use the same names, a close study of scripture clearly demonstrates that they do not refer to the same people and events. The events are separated by at least a thousand years. In Ezekiel's prophecy, Gog will be the leader of a great army that attacks the land of Israel, which is peaceful and unsuspecting at the time. Gog is described as the land of Magog, the prince of Rosh, Meshach, and Tubal. When will Ezekiel's battle of Gog and Magog occur? There are a couple of theories. Before the tribulation begins, this view points to the fact that after the battle, the people of Israel will be burning the enemy's weapons for seven years and spend over seven months burying the dead. That length of time most likely requires the battle to be fought before the tribulation and possibly before the rapture of the church during the first part of the seven-year tribulation. This view hinges on the fact that Israel is at peace when the attack begins. The security Israel enjoys is assumed to be the result of Israel's covenant with the Antichrist at the beginning of the tribulation. According to Ezekiel, Magog will not win. God will intervene to preserve Israel. There shall be a great earthquake. Every man's sword will be against his brother, and God will pour down torrents of rain hailstones and burning sulfur on Gog and his troops and on the many nations with him. The result is that nations will see God's greatness and holiness. Gog and Magog are mentioned again in Revelation 27 through 8. The duplicated use of the names Gog and Magog is to show that these people demonstrate the same rebellion against God as those in Ezekiel. It is similar to someone today calling a person the devil because he or she is sinful and evil. We know that the person is not really Satan, but because that person shares similar characteristics, he or she might be referred to as the devil. The book of Revelation uses Ezekiel's prophecy about Magog to portray a final end times attack on the nation of Israel. The result of this battle is that all are destroyed and Satan will find his final place in the lake of fire. It is important to recognize that the Gog and Magog of Ezekiel is quite different from the one in Revelation 1. In the Battle of Ezekiel, the armies come primarily from the north and involve only a few nations. The battle in Revelation will involve all nations with armies from all directions. 2. There is no mention of Satan in the context of Ezekiel. In Revelation, the context clearly names Satan as the primary character. 3. If Ezekiel's battle was the same mentioned in Revelation, there would be no need to bury the dead for seven months, since the latter battle is immediately followed by the great white throne judgment. 4. The battle in Ezekiel is used by God to bring Israel back to him. In Revelation 20, Israel has been faithful to God for a thousand years, the Millennial Kingdom. That answers the question, what are Gog and Magog? On our website, gotquestions.org, you'll find a deeper discussion and recommended resources. If this helps you, give us a thumbs up and click subscribe. Meanwhile, if you'd like to study more, click the bell and check out these other questions.